Welcome to another episode of MageCast.io. On our previous PHP spec episode, we covered how to set up and configure PHP spec, as well we went through a basic example by generating a new product class. In this lesson, we will go over one of the key concepts that we need to master in order to use PHP spec and spec PDD effectively. If you're already familiar with PHP spec matchers or just like to skip directly to the demonstration with Magento, click in the link below. Anyone coming from a PHP unit background should be familiar with the concept of assertions, which are used in a unit test to check for an expected outcome. However, in PHP spec, instead of having assertions, we make use of matchers. Matchers are special language constructs that we use to specify the behavior of the object that we're trying to test. But you might ask, why is this syntactic difference so important? Match, assert, they kind of sound the same. What's the difference and why does it matter? Well, to understand that, we need to understand how TDD and BDD differ from each other. And to put that in a sentence, BDD, or Behavior Driven Development, is often referred as Test Driven Development Done Right. PDD changes the vocabulary we use to create our specifications and by doing so, forces developers not only to write tests, but to design their code as they go along. We are no longer mindlessly writing tests, just to validate a preconceived and half-baked idea of how the code should look like. No, with PDD, we are thinking about how the code should behave and describing that without directly thinking about the implementation. This design process is often referred as emergence design and it's outside of the scope of this particular lesson. But for now, understanding the general concept should be more than enough. To do a quick recap, matches are used to describe how an object should behave. They are the equivalent of assertions on PHP unit, and they provide a way to verify behavior instead of the output. Out of the box, PHP provides 13 different types of matchers designed to test different sets of behavior. Let's quickly go over each of them and some examples. The first matcher on our list is the equivalent of the identical operator in PHP. With this type of operator, both type and value need to be identical for the matcher to return true. Next, we have the comparison operator, similar to the identity matcher, but the comparison uses the equal operator in PHP, which only compares against the value. So in this case, one, numeric and one string will return true. Next, we have a more interesting matcher. The true matcher is used to verify that a specific exception was thrown. In our example, we're saying when the function is called, with this set of parameters, it should throw an exception. Personally, I have found this matcher to be highly useful when creating payment gateways or custom shopping cart rules, since in both cases there are multiple things that we need to validate and test. The type matcher is used to verify that the object that we're describing implements an interface or extends a specific class. This could be useful if you want to verify that a custom model extends the right Magento class. The object state matcher is useful if we want to check the state of our object. Now, the way this particular matcher works is by expecting our code to follow specific conventions. Taking a closer look to our code example where should be enabled and should have payment functions are called, we can see the object state matcher we always assume that the functions will always start with either is or has, and the functions will always return a boolean value. Next, we have the count matcher. This matcher is a handy way of verifying collections. In order to make use of this matcher, the return value must be an array or an object that implements the countable interface. The scalar matcher is used to specify that the value returned by a method should be of a specific primitive type like string, array, boolean, float, and so on. Time for a quick recap. Matchers follow a naming convention. They all start with the keyword should. Most matchers have syntactic variations that behave the same, but are designed to make the resultant specification more readable. As specifications are not only tests, but also tell a story and help us document our code. In my opinion, the last point is what makes PHP spec and BDD incredibly appealing and fun to use. It's not just about the testing or the behavior, it's also about telling a story with our code. So far, we have seen the most common types of matchers. Those are the ones that with likelihood you will use, be using 90% of the time and for most of your tests. 
The six remaining measures I used to assert arrays and strings and we will look at them quickly. Array Matchers Out of the box, PHP spec provides three matchers to assert the contents of an array. And those are array contain, which is used to validate that a method should return an array that contains a specific value. For example, it could be used to test a magenta model to option array function and make sure it returns at least one of the expected values. Next, we have array key with value. Similar to the way array contain works, array key with value will assert that a specific value exists on an array, with the addition that it will also check that the value is assigned to a specific array key. Finally, we have array key. We can assert only the existence of a specific key inside of a return array without taking into account the value of said key. String matchers. The following three matchers are used to handle string assertions, and they are String star, which we will check that a method returns a string starting with a specific substring. String n, which we will check that a method returns a string ending with a specific substring. And string regex, which will allow us to assert that a string match a particular regular expression. Of the three, this is potentially the most useful for Magento developers, since often we will be more interested in validating that a specific string contains something like an error message or an ID rather than it begins or ends with a specific substring. As we have seen so far, PHP spec provides a compressive set of measures that should cover most assertion types for most projects. However, and this is especially true in the case of us Magento developers, there will be cases where you need to do assertions that are not covered by standard measures. Does this mean we should drop PHP spec and go back to use PHP unit? Well, of course not. PHP spec has our back and provides a way to create custom matchers for our project. These matchers are referred as inline matchers, and next we will see how we can use inline matchers to assert Magento specific behavior. For this example, we're going to work on a payment method specification. Keep in mind that we won't go over the specifics of how to set up Magento and PHP spec together, so don't feel discouraged if you are not quite understanding everything that is happening. And remember that the purpose of this lesson is to see how we can apply matchers into a real world context. In this example, we will be working on setting up a payment method class, as well as a few custom matchers to test some of the specific methods like can invoice and can authorize. Currently, I'm using the MagePec extension, a PHP spec plugin that adds Magento specific commands to PHP spec. In the next lesson, we will cover how to install and set up Mage Spec. The first thing we're going to do is describe our payment model. In this case, we will create a new custom Magento model called MageCAS X Payment. As we learned before, the command will generate our spec class, and if we run it PHP Spec again, it will also generate the corresponding Magento class in the right folder structure. Let's open up the project in our favorite text editor. As we can see, PHP spec not only generated the spec class under the spec folder, but it also generated all the Magento code following the Magento structure. Mage spec also generated the extension XML file under app etc models. As we can see, there is an empty payment class that extends the Magento abstract model. Let's go back and open our spec file. Since we're building a payment method, it makes sense to extend the Mage Payment Model CC class, for which we can create our first specification making use of the should have type matcher. Once our specification has been created, we can serve our spec file and try to run our test again, for which we should see a failing result, since our method class still extends the base abstract model. In true TDD fashion, now that we're read, we can go ahead and change the home code in order to make our test pass. So let's go back to the method class and change it to extend the Mage Payment Model CC class. After we have made the change, we can save our file and run PHP spec one more time. This time we should see all our tests passing. Let's go back one more time to our PHP spec file and continue describing our payment model. As any standard payment model, our example should be able to authorize a payment method. 
In Magento, payment methods use class properties to define what are capable of. And the abstract payment class defines getters for each of these class properties, like in our case, can authorize. Let's go ahead and run PHP spec one more time with our new specification. In this case, we're expecting to see a failing test since our X payment extension hasn't declared any of these class properties yet. And now that we have a failing test, we can go back into the payment class and make the necessary code changes in order to make the test go green. We can easily make our test pass by simply declaring a new class property called CanAuthorize and setting that to true. Finally, we can confirm our code changes are correct by running our tests one more time. So far, we have been able to work only using the predefined measures. But what if we want to assert things differently, or in the case of the payment model, we want a measure that is more readable and easier to understand? We're going to define a new measure called should be able to, which will take a single parameter. Internally, this measure will take the parameter and call the specific payment method getter. In PHP spec, we can define matchers inside a spec file by creating a new public function called getMatchers. Inside that function, we define an array with the address of our matcher, and as a value, an inline function that implements the assertions that we want to use. Now that we have declared our custom matcher, let's go ahead and rewrite our specification to make use of the new matcher. In this case, we are rewriting the it should be able to authorize payment function, which should now be calling our custom matcher, it should be able to, and as a parameter, we're going to pass authorize. Finally, we're going to save our spec file and run PHP spec for the last time, for which we are going to see all passing tests. We have only started to scratch the surface of all the functionality that PHP spec has to offer. In our next lesson, we're going to continue working on an example payment extension for Magento. As well, we will look into more detail what kind of setup is needed for this kind of development.